message to your younger self, say 20 years ago, what would that be? Oh, to, to my own self. Yeah. Not, your younger not, self. If you, if you, the other young people. Uh, is, is, is this another way of asking what have I learned over the last 20 years? Well, it could be. Just uh, what uh, would you? T yeah, what would you tell your younger self you know, from 20 years ago about where you were and where you were going? You know, so many things, but uh, it's just about this whole quest for material possessions. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not fucking worth it. Uh, it, it the, the, the amount of time and energy and, and money that I spent during those clueless moron years just acquiring stuff. Yep. And, and, and I wasn't just a, a choir. I mean, I was a, in 2008, I had my own four bedroom, three bath house, and five other. I was a single man. Wow. No children. I owned six houses. And, and my, my goal in 2007, before I pulled my head out of my ass, uh, uh, right up to the point that I met Terrence McKenna. Uh, my goal was that I, for some reason, I thought 40, that it would, that I would reach some sort of real estate agent, investor, nirvana, when I owned 40 houses. Yeah. And, and that's what I was doing in 2007. What I wanted to do, by the time I was 65, I was going to own 40 houses. And, and, and be getting the rental and, and have my little ham bone uh, real estate empire and retire at 65 and just, and just let the money roll in. And that was, I honestly believed, I honestly believed uh, in the year 2007 that the highest and best use of my life was to acquire 40 houses. Wow. Wow. <laughs> And and at what point you said so you mentioned mentioning uh, you were mentioning Terrence McKenna. At what point did you meet him? And uh, and was that like a transformative experience for you in terms of realizing? Well, he had already been dead for seven years by the time I met him on on YouTube. I first encountered uh, Terrence McKenna in November of two thousand seven, and. And Terrence, I, I, I certainly owe it to Terrence more than any one person for initially waking me up to the true magnitude of the crisis. Okay. You know, he was the first voice that ever penetrated not just my clueless moron, you know, trying to buy 40 houses, but even penetrated the uh, hopium uh, apocalyptic optimism uh, on any level, and so it was Terrence that 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 he was the voice that got me down the road into this, and then soon after uh, bumping into Terrence, it, it was Michael Rupert was the uh, was the the second voice. Yeah, God rest so, his soul. Yeah, <laughs> that was sad, man. Yeah, those was... two, Terrence McKenna and Michael Rupert. If, if anyone listening to this are, are not familiar with Terrence McKenna and Michael Rupert and are interested in this rabbit hole, and I am not recommending this rabbit hole to anybody, but if you want to understand what is going on on this rabbit hole, don't listen to some jackass like Hambo Little Tail or another <laughs> jackass whose name is never mentioned on this channel. Listen to Terrence McKenna, who died in 2000, and listened to Michael Rupert, who died, uh, well, we all know, four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, those, two, th those two voices. Now, Terrence has thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of video. He, he, even when nobody else was doing it, going all the way back to the mid-'80s, he videotaped every, every single every single one of his whatever you call those rap sessions that terrence did like nobody else before or since nobody else before or since and so there's thousands of hours 
he's, he's a little hard, a little bit of a bitter pill to swallow, but once you, once you work through your initial revulsion to his, it his voice sounds like, yes, he can go on, he can go on for hours. You think I'm bad. There's some parents in video that are that are almost eight hours long. The parents of Kenneth sitting in a chair looking at the camera and talking, we are so fucked uh, for hours and hours and he never stumbles, he never goes, uh, he never coughs. Well it was I think probably the psychedelics had and were helping him, you know, like ayahuasca and uh Masculine and things. Oh, like that. oh yeah, well that's yeah. definitely uh, helping him now. What, what they had to do with his brain, his brain literally exploded in the year 2000. <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 we will never know whether his uh, his psychedelic use led, had anything to do with. He died of a massive brain tumor in 2000. Well, I doubt that it had anything to do with his psychedelic experiences, but who knows. Anyway, you know, um, how did you, how uh, let's see? Uh, yeah, where what, where do you hope to go with Humpty Dumpty Tribe? What do you what do you want to accomplish? You have this thing, this this channel with millions of views. You have a uh, large, you're attracting a larger and larger following all the time. Where do you see it going, and what what do you, what are you trying to achieve with it? Well, see, this is the the single biggest. Uh, not with not this one of the big challenges is trying to figure out where where I go from here. Uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've crossed this critical five thousand. I've got five thousand people in the tribe. I've crossed three million views. I'm starting to feel like the the old real estate investor. You know, okay, all right, I've got five houses. <laughs> Forty houses now is like okay. I've got five thousand views, and I and, and listen to what I'm saying. That you, you need to listen to this. So all right, I've got five thousand subscribers. So now I need ten thousand. I understand. Yeah. I've got, I've got three million views. So now I need ten million views. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? So uh, I am. Uh, don't know. Uh, May 11th is, I think it's my eighth birthday. I, I, I'm i losing track of these. I think Humpty Dumpty Tribe turns eight yeah. on May 11th. And, uh, and I don't know, a lot of it has to do, I was more worried a couple of months ago that YouTube was just going to make up my mind for me right. and, and shut my channel down. And I was thinking, well, if these motherfuckers shut my channel down, and, 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 and so be it. That was just the universe saying, hey, I'm it, 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 that's Time to move on, on. yeah. But. Uh, but that seems to have backed off now. But I'm going ahead with, uh, I have already created the Hambone Little, Ch Hambone Little Tail channel on uh, Vimeo and actually a Humpty Dumpty Tribe channel on Vimeo.com. And I have the Hambone Little Chat channel on BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E dot com. So I'm, I've already established these in case I need to, in, in case I do get shut down. Yeah, you want to I think I, I, I'm just going to pick back up. And I think a, most of your subscribers will follow you over there from YouTube. I, and how, how, is, how is it dealing with these other platforms? Are they, are they well, getting really better? Doing it. No, oh. I'm not doing anything. Okay. I, I just, I, I just have them create. I mean, I, I put a few videos. What I'm doing is, if it, it, it's just some crazy hambone little tail story that has nothing to do with the collapse of a planet, just me telling crazy stories about my past. Okay. And just silly adventures. Just go over to Vimeo or BitChute and look for hambone little tail. I've got ten or twelve videos up there. It has nothing to do with the atmosphere. So I, I'm putting some of that stuff over there, just you know, holding my space in case I need to uh, I need to bail. Now I am heavily considering, or at least I was until last week, is creating a, a new YouTube channel uh, called something like Voices from the Anthropocene.
Anthropocene or something. And right. What that channel is going to be, I'm going to kill Hambone and Littletail will die. Uh, I will kill Hambone and Littletail on that channel, and there will be this weird, boring ass guy named Sam Mitchell who will be the moderator of that channel. And what it will be is 100%. It's not going to be Hambone and Littletail ranting. It's going to be the former journalist, Sam Mitchell, uh, without all the four-letter words and the screaming and the we are so fuck fine and all of that. Uh, well, I think that m might work well for uh, interviews because, uh, like you yeah, were saying, well, you know, you're, you're... It's going to be a combination of, uh, of interviewing other people from, uh, I won't use the word doomsphere, from the Anthropocene, either reading, S kind of like what I do in my doomsday sermon, mm -hmm. but every, every day I will read an essay trying to introduce people to other voices than the pretty much one voice in the doomosphere. There are other people in the doomosphere other than one voice. Oh, There's certainly. Five or six voices. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. And also... Oh, yeah. So, and, and then a weekly, a daily one of those, and a weekly interview. But the, the problem with that, I, I was so depressed after my interview, and, and, and I'm not going to even mention the guy's name. He, he, he's a good guy, and he's doing what he can, but when I interviewed, literally, literally the man who uh, invented the word biodiversity. Really? This guy for 50 years who has been down in this rabbit hole, the guy is completely uh, thinking that we're going to turn this around. And, and I really got depressed after this, after this interview with this guy. Like, like here we are, this man could be doing so much to, to, to wake people up, and, and, and all he's doing is, is telling people to go back to sleep. And I'm thinking, you know, if I interview one more of these goddamn hopium infused apocalyptimists, I'm just going to go off on them in, in, in the middle of, a, of an interview and say, pull your fucking head out of your ass. But, so, uh, so I don't even know, I don't even know if I'm going to do that. I, I, I've literally, uh, it depressed me for, for, I mean, seriously depressed me for four or five days. Someone of this man's stature sitting there, it's like he was reading the United Nations World Bank how to talk to clueless fucking moron, limp dick, environmental and journalist interviewers. Like he had a little playbook uh, written by the goddamn United Nations and the World Bank. And, and he was just parroting this stuff. I wanted to reach through the fucking phone and, 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 and strangle him. Perhaps you know? it, it, becomes, it becomes more of a career for these people who maybe originally were very concerned and, and did some good work. And then eventually it becomes all about perhaps uh, getting sponsorships and uh, being appealing uh, so that you can go on network television and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, I mean... Well, be hired by the UN and the World Bank. Yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. So, the well, United Nations and the World Bank are going to hire Emma and Littletail to <laughs> tell the fucking truth. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would... Uh, I would personally enjoy that very much. Uh, I, I, I'm recording this too. I'm taking a picture of Sancho Panza. You know, I think Sancho Panza needs to go to go to the work go to work for the UN. <laughs> Jesus, it, it would make about as much sense. I, 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 I'm just getting this this, this hopium and this apocalypticism. It, it, it's just gotten to the point, Veg, that it, it, it's just one more thing. To, uh, to make you completely fucking demoralized uh, about how this, uh, how this planet is rising to this challenge. But I also understand it doesn't make any fucking difference now. No, it's too late. Might, well, you know, you might as well drink the fucking hopium. I'm just jealous of this guy. I, I wish to hell that I could maybe have a jug full of, of hopium. And I... Uh, and just it, it just swill my my little hopium. <laughs> uh, it, 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 we're fucked. 
Okay, so if you could if you could change one thing about the world, what would it be? Just one thing. What do you think? I would sterilize the <laughs> <laughs> right. And then that is the biggest no brainer question you would have ever asked. If I had the power I, today to, to sterilize the human race and make this fucking uh, cancer disappear off this planet, I would do it today. And, well, and I would wish everybody a long, happy, peaceful, painless life, and we could have one big party and, and just blink out. It's time for our asses to go. You mean the whole the whole species, or or you know who would who would be allowed to reproduce? Every fucking one of us, every well, single Homo sapien sapien on this planet. If I could sterilize every god one of them. Uh, today, by any means necessary, that would be the change I would make on this planet. And maybe there would be a tiny little window that that my uh, uh, of hopium left at the bottom of the jug is it, it, for is it, for us motherfuckers. <clears throat> it, 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 just to admit, it was a grand experiment. We failed. It's time to blink off, pass the baton to to someone else. And if we get out of here today, there might be a slim chance for the, the our fellow Earthlings that we leave this scorched planet with to deal with it. And then, then they will deal with it. They'll they'll do the best they can. Just but we need to make this planet a human exclusion zone. It's like Chernobyl. I always say that the number one spot on this planet that gives me any ray of hope for the future of this planet is ground zero Chernobyl. Radioactive, uh, wo radioactive wolves can... That, it, where, where this planet is going to repopulate itself, okay, from all, from our, after we're gone, or from these nuclear, uh, these, these nuclear ground zero spots. And the reason for this is simple. They have been declared human exclusion zones. In, in Chernobyl, we have 32 years of, of all the ground data for anybody to see that uh, the single most biologically diverse spot anywhere in that whole area of the world Chernobyl. is around zero Chernobyl because every other earthling we share this planet with us would rather deal would rather deal with a nuclear meltdown zone in, in the middle of a human exclusion zone than they would just find to coexist with us fucking morons going about our daily lives. Just, just those nice guys, people, <laughs> any other species on this planet. Well, uh, don't don't you think that's a little, a little extreme? I mean, just a little bit. Uh, I'm just saying, from the average, the average person's point of view, perhaps. Give a flying fuck about the average person. <laughs> anybody who pulls their goddamn head out of their ass and and, and, and acts like they care about our fellow Earthlings. If you care about your fellow Earthlings, you won't breed. Well, I agree. I, uh... I can't disagree with that because um, certainly uh, my wife and I have been together for s as long as you can imagine, never produced and never wanted to. Brother. Well, Amen. so yeah, yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah, there's 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 no reason uh, for humans to reproduce, but honestly, I would take it a little slower than the human extinction model. Perhaps, uh, why do you think humans are here in the first place? Or is, is there any spiritual uh, reason in your mind, or is it that we're just um, basically parasites? We we are parasites. We're we're clearly parasites. So there's no no hope what's no hope for mankind humankind whatever whatsoever. There's there's well, there's no hope for it. We're going extinct. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are going to be extinct. I don't agree with some people that we're going to be extinct in the next two to ten years. As much as I wish the hell we were going to be extinct in two years, it ain't going to happen. I would say I would say a hundred personally, but but, but certainly uh, within the next hundred years, we are where we're going to be extinct anyway. Mm -hmm. So do you, uh, you have no faith, you have no 
faith that, that anybody can come up with any solutions to these Zero. horrendous Zero. problems. They're, they're out of here. The, 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 the grand experiment has been declared a failure. We are going to go extinct anyway, whether it's two years or a hundred on a on a evolutionary uh, time scale. It's a wink of an eye, whether it's two years of a hundred. I don't understand why people are so fucking wrapped up in this. I've never understood why people are saying, you know, some guy today, uh, you know, begging me to, to give a fucking date. It does not matter whether it's two years or a hundred. Guys, the, the, the bottom line is the sooner the better. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sooner we go extinct, the, the better the chance that life is going to continue on this planet. Every single day that human beings continue on this planet, that is the less chance that every other species of Earth that we share this planet with are going to have any hope. I happen, as, as Paul Watson says, uh, you know, one of my, the, uh, not, not the fucker from InfoWars, the no. real Paul Watson from yep. Sea Shepherd. You, you, you know, like, like, I don't speak for people. I speak for our fellow, well, he says I speak for whales, but you know what I say. Mm-hmm. I, I don't give a fuck. There, people have enough people speaking for them. I am speaking for every other one of our fellow world things we share this planet with. That's who I'm. I'm with Paul on this one. Uh, I'm with Paul. Uh, I am speaking for every other one of our fellow Earthlings who have done nothing, nothing to deserve what, what we're doing to them. They haven't done a goddamn thing what we're doing to them. We we deserve 100 percent of, of the shit that we're doing to ourselves. You know that guy. Uh, I want to say hats off to that lawyer, uh, David, uh, what was his name? Oh, the guy that set himself on fire. I mean, yeah, Burkell or whatever is, I can't, I'm sorry, I don't remember, Burkell, I think it's how you pronounce it, good, good for him, uh, he, he, you know, dousing himself in, in gasoline and lighting, and lighting himself in, in, on fire and committing suicide in the middle of this park in Brooklyn on a Saturday morning. He, you know, he's like, pull your fucking heads out of your asses, people. This is what, but it's what we're doing to ourselves. It's what we're doing uh, to the goddamn planet. And, and when in, in 20 minutes from now, when I finish this, this, this uh, interview, what am I going to do? I'm going to walk out and I'm going to get in my gas sucking truck. I'm going to turn that fucking key and, and, and I'm going to do my part. To, uh, to to bring down this planet. Uh, you know, I mean, I need to go like everybody else does. Sure. Um, sure, we're all, we're all wrapped up I'm, in it. We're all, I'm not quite ready to pour myself in gasoline and light a match as much as a lot of people wish I would. Well, I, I hope that's not true, because I think you're doing a lot more good than you realize. I may not... Um, I may not agree with you about the, the future of the of human race because I'm I'm still there's this tiny little bit of hopium left that, that perhaps cutting the population right down and not by some disaster but by humane methods sterilization I think we could perhaps uh, buy humanity a little longer but maybe we maybe you're right maybe we don't deserve it because all of us like you say I go out the door talking about all this and I turn the key in my gas sucking vehicle too and I have a gas sucking lawnmower and a chainsaw and you know so we're all we're all doing it but it, are we if we had a choice to do to do it in a less destructive way, it, would that be perhaps? Oh, okay, now, now, now I do think a, a certainly a, an interim uh, measure is, is to bring down global industrial civilization. Certainly. There's, there, there's three ways of saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. Immediately, today, 100% cease and desist the use of all fossil fuels, which is another way of saying bring down global industrial civilization because global industrial civilization is 100% dependent on fossil, on fossil fuels, fuels. Yeah. which would bring down within, I would say, six weeks that 90% of the planet would, uh, would be dead. 
uh, it would be a much more horrific way to go than simply sterilizing all of us and just having a party for the rest of our lives. <laughs> but, I, but I'm fully in support of bringing down it. It's three ways of saying the exact same thing because 90% of the population uh, on, the, on the planet is dependent on global industrial civilization, which is another way of saying that 90% of this planet is, is depending for their lives on fossil fuels. Right. So when you rip out the fossil fuels, uh, global industrial civilization collapses. 90% of us are dead in the single most horrific blood, I mean, take Mad Max and, and put him on a bad acid trip. And you would see what would happen if we ceased to desist in the use of fossil fuels. But uh, hey, I, I'm willing, I would be one of the 90% to go. I, I might make it a day or two longer than most of my clue. Well, you, you have a gar you, you know how to grow food. And um, I, I've, got, uh, I've got like 50 heads of lettuce out there. And I did pay, dig my first new potato. My garden would keep me alive for about a month. But, of course, all my neighbors would have been out here raiding Rage. my garden, uh, <laughs> you know, about the, the day after the supermarket shell. This out. certainly sounds like a nightmarish uh, solution to our problems, Hambone, but... I, I, I but, think just sterilizing the planet and, and just let, let us coasting on out, uh, you know, we can keep global industrial civilization going, I guess, and if we just sterilize everybody, so it's, it's our choice. Sterilize everybody and keep the fossil fuel party going until each one of us blink out, or, uh, or, or the other one is in the fossil fuel party, and 90% of us are dead, and the 10% of us who are left are going to be scratching out, uh, you know, scratching out some hunter-gatherer tribal society, uh, that, that doesn't hold much appeal uh, to me either. Uh, those, those, were, those were essentially our two choices. Uh, but if we keep on the way we're doing now, uh, we're not sterilizing ourselves and we're not stopping the party. So we're, Mother Nature has no choice but, but to do this. Well, she is going to she attack the virus, right? Attack the virus that's attacking the earth. I understand. And there's this is stuff we've known about for a long time, for decades, really. And there's uh, proof coming out now that even the, the oil companies, own scientists warned about global warming, and it was just covered up and hidden for years. And it's the, the I think the political problem is larger, is larger that the uh, oligarchic class has seized control of the means of production. And I, I'm sounding like an old Bolshevik here, but I'm not really a communist. Uh, but You're I, like a white D. Eisenhower to me, bro. Oh, <laughs> 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 Bolshevik, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I get, call, I get uh, trolled and called a communist many, many times, but I'm sure it's nothing what compared to... Uh, what they say about Ike, then, uh, about, about talking about the very thing you know, that he was talking about, the year I was born. Mm -hmm. The year I was fucking born, Ike was up there saying, uh, guys, uh, we better cut this shit out. And just as you were talking, you and I were talking about before you turned the the the, the, uh, the recorder on a few minutes ago. What were we talking about? We we, we were talking about all the you know the oil. But yeah, the, the Keystone for this Canadian corporation building a building a pipeline across the U.S. With, with Trump and Trudeau uh, cheering it on, while a Texas corporation is building a pipeline across Canada, and, and Trump and Trudeau. It, it, it's all one big incestuous clusterfuck. It, Everybody, definitely. all the fuckers, are in bed with each other. Absolutely. Uh, exactly as, as I predicted the year I was fucking born 58 years ago. Well, it, he was looking into his crystal ball and he called it exactly right. We need to guard against this. Well, we did not guard against it and we're getting to every fucking thing we deserve. And my, the main rant, which I just put on, which you haven't heard, the, the economic rant, you know, what do you think is going on in the stock market today? It's all of these, the stock market is cheering on Donald Trump uh, doing that shit in Syria. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It, 
it's it's sure, good it's for business. Hello? Yeah, well, the World War is totally good for the stock market. It is. It is. It, they don't care. There's some weirdness going on with my phone. I don't know why. Anyway, I'm going to draw this to an end because we've been, geez, we've been talking for an hour. And do you well, mind if I, good yeah, do you mind if I put this up in two parts? I, I won't c yeah. cut anything out at all, but I, I think it might uh, be better in two parts if that's okay with you. Yeah, it's 57 minutes. Well, I, I've been recording this too, so but real quickly, uh, I'm going to say bye to the tribe before my camera eats this video card. Bye, guys. Good talking to you. Keep up the good fight, amigo. I will. You too, brother. Bye now. Later.